You're strong. And I could snap my fingers. And you'd all cease to exist. Went forward in time to see all the possible outcomes. Did we win any? It's a small price to pay for salvation. To all our amazing fans, the truth is, we are here for you. We gotta thank you for 10 years of support and inspiration. You're the reason we're here. Thank you for 10 years of... The greatest cosplay. Standing in those long lines for Hall H. Reading the comics after you saw the movie. Twitter fights. And it's all been leading up to this. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for being so incredible. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Let's all snap our fingers and break down some new Avengers. They released this Thanos spot. I had to wait a little bit till the footage wasn't quite as janky. There's usually like a cell phone version, then there's like a high quality version that comes later. So the cool thing about this is I was going to do a Thanos backstory video because he has a different backstory in the movies than he does in Marvel Comics. And thankfully they just released a Thanos-centric TV spot that deals with one of his most iconic moments from the Infinity Gauntlet saga. I could snap my fingers and you'd all cease to exist. In the comics, he just snapped his fingers. It was just like this clever move, like he had this goal to accomplish, erasing half of all life in the universe to balance it for death on her orders. But it was a little more Jim Starlin winking at the audience through Thanos' character, like he just holds his hand up in the air with the gauntlet, snaps his fingers, and then all over reality, you see the Avengers start to realize that something has changed. Like, wait a minute, where did everybody go? But in the comics, the people that got erased were remembered by the people that were still left alive. So he was effectively killing them, not wiping them from existence. Because if that was true, then everyone would lose memory of the people that got erased. Also really cool, Doctor Strange says that he used the Time Stone to try and look into the future to see all potential outcomes in the fight against Thanos. And by the sound of it, when Iron Man's like, did we win in any of those scenarios? Doctor Strange is probably going to be like, hell no, we lost in every single one. But if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff happening between now and Infinity War. They released that promo where they're like, hey everybody, thanks so much for spending all your money on our movies. Keep doing that, please. I always love being appreciated by big brands like Marvel. Like, they want to let you know. They really do appreciate you. But I think probably the best way to do that is from the actors every once in a while, just reminding everyone, hey, thanks to the fans. Like, you are the reason why we are popular. And just continuing to churn out really awesome movies. Show your thanks by continuing to give us the steady stream of really cool movies. But the really important thing about Thanos' backstory is that they reveal they basically cut it from the movie. It's like a giant deleted scene. Maybe some of that will wind up making the DVD. The problem with a lot of the Thanos deleted scenes is that most of them were deleted before they filmed them. So it's not the same thing as a normal deleted scene where you might have Mark Ruffalo cracking wise with Shuri when they're inside her lab. Like there might just be a lot of improv there that hit the cutting room floor because it didn't work or it wasn't funny. When it comes to Thanos, Baby Groot, usually when they cut scenes is before they get to the CG stage. So it's much earlier in the process. But the Russos recently told us exactly what those deleted backstory scenes are. And I don't think this is a spoiler because these were never intended to be in the movie. And I don't think they're going to make the DVD either. It's just like context for Josh Brolin when he was forming Thanos' character. So earlier, Kevin Feige said he's from a planet called Titan, which we all know, same thing in the comics, that's no longer inhabited because of things he thought he could help prevent and he was not allowed to do that. What he feared most happened and the planet and everybody on it basically went extinct. He vowed not to let that happen again. He thinks he sees the universe going down the tubes. He thinks he sees life expanding outward unchecked. That will bring ruin, he believes, to the universe and to that life. So he's trying to protect life by erasing half of it. But then the Russos, couple of bros, totally told us what the cataclysm was that destroyed the planet Titan that Thanos is so upset about. There's also some extra stuff that they said in here that has to do with people's powers and their relative abilities, so we'll talk about that too. They say, and I'm quoting them, Thanos is a virtually indestructible character who's stronger than the Hulk and has invincible skin. He's from a planet called Titan. Many years prior to the film, his planet was experiencing a cataclysmic shift. 
they were running out of resources, they were overpopulated, Thanos made a recommendation that they exterminate half of the population randomly in order to save the rest of the population. Of course, the other Titans rejected this notion, branded him a madman, exiled him, and the planet ended up dying. So he's taken it upon himself to go planet by planet throughout the universe and wipe out half of the population of each planet as a way to correct things and bring the universe back into balance. Once he hears about the stones, he realizes that if he can get a hold of all the Infinity Stones, he can control the entire universe. With the snap of his fingers, he could correct things permanently by removing 50% of life from it. So these are the incredible stakes for our characters. If the Avengers were built for anything, it's for stopping Thanos from completing his goal. So already, if you're a big comic book reader, you know exactly how they changed his backstory. They worked in that iconic finger snap and made it a much bigger part of his backstory. It was less of a whim like it was in the comics and much more of an idea that he had that was rejected that led to the destruction of his people. They also confirm how powerful he is relative to the other Avengers. Hulk is a really good example because he's like the strongest Avenger, even though Thor technically has god level power. People could argue all day about who's more powerful. When they say unbreakable skin too, what'll probably happen is there'll be some moment during the film where you'll see someone try to shoot him with some really hardcore bullet or a blast that'll just bounce right off of him. Even without the Infinity Gauntlet, he's one of the most powerful people in the Marvel comic book universe. But that's because death brought him back to life. He's died multiple times, but death will bring him back. So if he was strong, then he died, he'll come back and get a huge power level upgrade so that he can accomplish whatever it is that death wants him to do. So they're just trying to balance the MCU power levels a little bit. Everybody is a little bit less powerful than they are in the comics because it gets pretty ridiculous in the comics. But the big thing about his backstory that they changed is, is that Thanos grew up as a child on Titan. Everybody thought that he was weird because he carried the Deviant gene. So the Deviant is part of the Eternals race. It's sort of like this offshoot. It gets into some crazy Jack Kirby fourth world stuff that he did at Marvel. So the Eternals is sort of like a fourth world type story, like the new gods of DC. Marvel has a version of that. Thanos is descended from their race. Most of them look like normal people, but because he carried the deviant gene, he came out looking like this purple thumb that people kept making fun of when they released pictures of him for the first time. While he was growing up, he also started to hallucinate a girl that became his best friend, like his imaginary best friend that was later revealed to be the cosmic entity Death that just followed him around, used him as a tool. He eventually fell in love with her and realized who she really was. But as a child growing up, she was just a companion that would follow him around and egg him on to do really messed up stuff. Like, hey, why don't you, why don't you try dissecting this animal here? Why don't you kill this person over here? So you slowly see this totally normal boy who's really bright, he was a really smart person, slowly descend into madness and embrace the idea of death. Like he fell in love with death. He left Titan, went on a bunch of pirate adventures, eventually started leading his own crew, gathered his own forces, came back, destroyed the planet Titan. So in the comics, he destroyed his own race on purpose instead of like the movie where he tried to save them, but it's more of a tragic backstory. You can kind of see how the movie is trying to humanize him just a little bit more like, oh, you know, he tried to save his planet, even though his plan really is mad. And I love the way that they do say that he was branded a madman, as in the mad Titan. But hopefully that explains what his deleted backstory scenes are. Not going to see those in the movie. Maybe they'll talk about them on the DVD. There'll probably be a couple of Thanos featurettes that they'll release when we get closer to. But there'll be plenty more Infinity War this week. Just leave all your bonus video requests in the comments below. Congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big video, Paul Faccio. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. New Flash episode posting later tonight, so that should be up in a couple hours. But click here for my premiere video and click here for brand new Flash. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.